Hey guys, it's Spider Pig here, and today I'm very, very excited because I'm going to be showing you footage from DCS 1.5 open beta uh, with me flying with the Oculus Rift DK2. Now, yesterday when I installed the D uh, DCS 1.5 and I tried the Oculus Rift, it didn't work very well. It kept crashing and crashing and crashing, and I went to the forums. And everybody else was having the same kind of experience. But what today, what I did was I kind of tried a couple different things, and I got some things to work. So I figured I'd make a video, and I'd show you kind of what I did and what worked and what didn't work, and uh, you know we can kind of talk about it, and you can see kind of the footage uh, as I'm talking through this. And then at the end, I do want to kind of mention about stuff about open beta and uh, what you guys can do to help because I think the whole purpose of a beta is to get feedback to the actual um, company and help them out. So, um, first of all, let's talk about my computer and what I was using to fly with this. This with um, I am basically in the process of not really upgrading my computer, but I am putting a new case for it, so it's a little uh, quieter, and I'm uh, going to be installing a bigger air cooler in there as well. So my computer is not in my cockpit right now, it's on my desk. So to fly, I was using a Logitech uh, Pro 3D, I believe it is, just a simple joystick. Um, so I, not, I didn't have my normal X65 like I normally would fly my X62. So uh, sometimes in the video you'll see I had to adjust the, uh, the settings in order to make the joystick work okay. Um, but as far as the specs on my computer, I have an Intel i7-2600K, uh, which is overclocked to 4.3 gigahertz, I believe. And I have 16 gigs of very fast RAM. I think I forget what the speed of it is, but it's 16 gigs of RAM. I have a GeoForce 980 graphics card, and the graphics card has 4 uh, gigabytes of video RAM, and for the footage here, uh, I have everything pretty much on high, um, I kind of just use the default high, uh, it looks beautiful within the game, both with the Oculus Rift and that, so, um, so basically what I did was, I basically went in and I tried instant action on every module and I have all the modules so I tried them all and an instant action the modules that seemed to work the best at least that were more consistent uh, and didn't crash as much were the SU-25, the Huey and the MIA. Those three modules seemed to work the best for instant action. And, um, I, I did just quick flights with them, with the three modules, and what you're looking at, the footage here that you're looking at, is not the standard, like, two eye views, it's actually what the ECS shows on the screen as you find the job the script. So, this is kind of like the screen that we have to capture, um, and you can kind of see things that are fun. Um, so, with any instant action, again, three modules that I got to work on a fairly consistent basis, is the S225, the MI8 and the Huey. Now, just to be, you know, for testing purposes, um, I've been having trouble logging in with my account. It seems to work half the time. So every time when I ask me to log in, I just X out and I just don't need that. I don't know if that's helping or not, but in case you want to try to replicate my results, that's what I've been doing. I've been kind of Xing out when I ask me to log in. Um, it seems like, yes, last night I was able to log in fine this morning. Today, I've been I don't know what the issue on that is. So that's what I do uh, to get in. Uh, instant action, again, I was able to do those modules. In order to get the other modules to work, and um, I was able to go into a mission, and I tried a couple different modules for the mission. The F-15 module, I was able to actually get in um, through the mission kind of, uh, scenario. And, but the F-15 wasn't started up, and I didn't have my normal keys and it started up so I didn't do anything with it and I just did, you know went on um, in further testing I actually have a training map that I used to kind of learn the different aircraft so what I ended up doing was I ended up just going into that 
and two supply trucks uh, heading was to able to the left of the town the, um, and looks ahead. That map to actually start things up. Smoke. Looks like I'm looking Wait at the footage two. now. Looks like Wait I was able to get the A10C as location. well working in this action. I totally forgot about that. So again, the four modules I was able to get working in this action is the A10C, the uh, Huey, the MIA, and the F25. Um, and that's pretty much it. So within my training mission, back to my training mission, I have a training mission that has all the modules kind of on there. I kind of use either one or two slots for each aircraft. The first one is usually cold start, the second one is usually hot start, and some of them I actually have like in the air already, so if I just want to play around with them. Uh, I was able to get in and kind of fly a very uh, different amount of aircraft. I think I was able to fly um, the B-109, I want to say. Pull up, the, pull up. Well, I think it's BF-109. I, I, don't, I don't recognize altitude, that. Altitude, altitude. But I was able, actually able to fly the L-39, which I really wanted pull to up, do. Pull up, pull uh, up. Because, you know, I, I flew it yesterday for a little bit. I really kind of like it a lot. And I just wanted to see what it looks like with the Oculus Rift. Um, so I was able to fly a whole bunch of different aircraft, and you can see at the end here, uh, you'll see me flying the, all of those different aircrafts in my mission. And it's actually really nice the way they set it up now, uh, within a mission where you're a client, like a multiplayer mission. You get to choose a side, either blue or red, now, or a spectator, you can actually be a spectator now. And within there, you can actually select, uh, you know, the aircraft. Up, now, on the F-39 in multiplayer, you can actually do... Uh, altitude, either be a rear altitude. seater or the front guy, the the, pilot, the main pilot. Um, and I don't know how the back seater takes over, but apparently it's possible. I don't know if it's possible yet within this version of DCS, but I know in the future it'll be possible. Uh, so some great footage of that online. So uh, I wanted to fly the L39. I was able to fly that. Uh, and then it worked um, so it, it, it kind of you know. It seemed like it worked the best with my mission, but that's after I, I had this working for you know, quite a bit of uh, aircraft uh, that I was able to get working. So, the impressions of flying in the Oculus Rift compared to the um, the older version, the D, basically the non beta version right now, the, uh, it's the standard version of DCS that's out there right now, there's a huge difference. A huge, huge difference. In in the current uh, DCS 1.5, you have to use the runtime 7, actually 0.7, the Oculus to work. And what that does is it eliminates the, a, um, the extended uh, window mode that the Oculus uses and just uses direct mode, which is great because it actually works directly with the Oculus. And what that does is it gives you actually a nice GUI interface that's when you start up. Because before, when you started up, you had to start up with a monitor, you can have to do everything within there, and then go to the Oculus Rift. With this, you can actually start up and do everything with the Oculus Rift on. It's still hard to see your keyboard, so I had to do a lot of things. Uh, so on the keyboard, I had to lift the Oculus Rift up a couple times um, in order to do things. But, it is a great kind of um, method to do things, and I'm glad they're looking into this a lot more, because it shows that they're committed to the virtual reality players out there who want to use the Oculus Rift. I think when the official CV1 version comes out, it's going to be huge. Flying it now, compared to before, is like, I'd say about 160 times better. Um, you can see things a lot clearer. The dials are still a little hard to read, um, but they're, I can still read them a little bit. With the MDFs, you can still, they're a little sharper, but I still couldn't read the text unless I got really, really close. You know, at this point, it's a huge jump, the graphics. I mean, it's beautiful, both the inside of the aircraft and the outside of the aircraft. It's really beautiful to look at. Um, so, I, I can only imagine, you know, with the CV-1 version, which is coming almost double the resolution of the current version of the DK-2, uh, it's going to be so much more beautiful to look at, and hopefully a lot sharper to look at as well. But right now, it is amazing to fly within the uh, DCS-1. There is a couple kind of drawbacks, um, you know, and again, this is open beta, you know, I'm, expect, I'm not expecting perfection here. Um, I found in the, I guess the, the regular version of DCS, when I my, my pilot wasn't sitting in the right position, I, I could center myself by pressing uh, the num, num key, numpad 5, 
and that would center me. I, I find that it's kind of it kind of puts me in it's still like a little further back from the seat, so I feel like I'm a little back. And in some aircraft, like when I looked around, it was actually you know I was I was hitting metal around me, um, so it kind of. You know, that's a, it's a minor thing. So I kind of just scooched, scooched up my chair just to kind of make make myself be in the right position for the uh, for the cockpit. And it actually worked pretty well. Uh, I was able to do that. But that's just, you know, a minor inconvenience, um, you know, and it was it was definitely not, not too horrible. Um, so I'm looking right now at the video. Right now I just took the L39 for a spin for the first time. Um, soon you'll kind of see that uh, I had to adjust the controls. Uh, in order to make my um, my my uh, Logitech, Logitech uh, 3D Pro work, and you know I was able to do it with the Oculus Rift on. I had no problems uh, just adjusting things with the Oculus Rift on, and um, I was able to just basically. I find that with the Logitech uh, 3D Pro, it maps the thrust to the uh, Z, and it should be to the slider. It's a, it's a minor thing, and uh, I was able to. As you can see I was able to adjust the. Uh, the, the dead zones and the curvature. I find that with the Russian aircraft, you kind of have to have a little more curvature. Uh, that's just my preference. I, I don't know if everybody else kind of feels that way. But, um, you know, I, I kind of was able to do that with the Rift on without any problems. Um, the L-39 itself, beautiful aircraft. I was able to kind of do a lot of things with it. And um, it looked beautiful just from the inside. I mean, it seems like with the aircraft, I don't know, just because I'm flying during the day, but they seem to be a light brighter um, than the old, the, the release version right now. And, uh, you know, like right over here, you can see when I look to the right, my head kind of hits the, the, the metal and it kind of gets in the way. So uh, it's a little weird, but um, yeah, and I just popped out there. Um, but, you know, overall, flying it was just amazing. You know, it was just so much fun to fly this thing. Um, I'm looking forward to doing a lot more flight. I didn't go into the rear cockpit. I didn't know how to do that. I didn't map that yet in my, my uh, Logitech 3, uh, 3D Pro, but I will eventually do that. But apparently, you can actually, uh, you know, cl close off the the pilot's uh, view, so you have to kind of use the uh, um, instruments more than rely on your view, which is going to be awesome. I'm looking forward to testing it out in the multiplayer uh, with somebody and just kind of seeing how it actually works and how the lag is on that. So, you know, overall, it's it's amazing. I would definitely recommend it. Um, again, you know, you have to have the, the one time, do 0 0.7. You have to be in direct mode, and you have to be patient because it will crash. Pretty much after every f instant flight I did, it crashed as soon as I hit quit. So be prepared for lots of crashes, but when it works, it's beautiful. The uh, When I was using my training map, the one module that actually crashed it, I was, I was switching between the different aircrafts, the one module that crashed it was the, the Hawk. So, I don't know if it's just not ready yet or, you know, what's wrong with it, but I'll definitely do more testing, I'll definitely shoot more footage as I fly more. Um, but I did want to talk about something else, you know, this is an open beta, and kind of what open beta means. Um, I'm a software developer, you know, I've developed lots of different applications, both for my personal self and for for work, and um, when you when you create an application or create something that, you know, other people would use, um, you need to have a testing environment to test it. So at work, you know, a good example would be, um, you know, people wanted the latest version of Firefox. So I packaged it up. And I have a test lab which has eight machines in there, and I installed it on there, and uh, you know everything works fine. Um, but within my lab, you know that's just a small population. So the next step we did was we have a pilot group that we sent, you know, send the the package to, and they test it. And what we found out was uh, the package, um, you know, it didn't work for for the people out there. So. Uh, we basically had to, you know, come back and fix it. And that's really what kind of open beta does. It basically says, hey, you know, we've tested it on our machines. Everything kind of seems to work. Uh, but we need you guys to just, you know, have at it and see if you can find anything wrong with it. And the nice thing is, in an open beta like this, 
is that DCS kind of, they, they get people with a lot of different hardware that they wouldn't have normally on hand at their your disposal in order to test things on. So they will test, you know, this kind of gives them feedback with lots of different hardware configurations, lots, lots of different hardware types, you know, you're talking AMD, uh, Intel, you know, different controllers, things like that. So it's kind of good for them because they get lots of feedback. But here's the important part. When you want to give feedback, you have to make sure that you give as much information as you can. So let's take, for instance, I was flying with the DK2. I did instant mission. I went to the L39. I clicked fly. It crashed. I could go in the forums under the bug report and say, I tried flying with the DK2. It crashed. If I just did that, that would suck because they're not getting any information that they need in order to resolve that issue. What I need to do in that case is say, you know, I opened up, you know, the DCS 1.5. I, you know, I'm using, um, you know, the SDK uh, runtime 0.7 Oculus Rift SDK. You know, here's my computer specs. Here's my controller. Here's everything I have. My operating system, Windows 7. Give them as much information as you can because that'll help them. Now, there's another part, um, you know, let's say you were flying the L-39, you came in for a landing somewhere, you hit, like, the flaps, and it crashed then. You want to kind of describe what you were doing, you know, if you actually were able to fly when it crashed. As much detail as you can give them. Now, there's another thing that kind of is really useful for them, and that's the log files. Uh, the log files kind of are, you know, will tell them exactly what happened during that crash, and it'll be able to give them good information that they can use in order to fix the situation in the future. Now, the log files, I will have to look at the, and I'll put in the description exactly their location, but I know it's under users, your username, saved games, I believe Eagle Dynamics or DCS open beta, and logs folder in there. Uh, and basically, what I would do is I just compress all the the crash logs in there and just post it on the on the post that you're describing your issue. And, and it's really important because the more feedback they get, you know, that's that's highly detailed like that, um, the better they can fix the issue. And because you know, when the more information they have, the better uh, you know they can fix things and and kind of move things along quicker. Um, so it's up to the community, you know, not just to enjoy this great product, but to report back and give back feedback on what, you know, you're experiencing. Um, so for me, you know, I will just, you know, when I put up a report about my testing today, I'll put up all the modules I was able to test, you know, and, you know, what my experience was. Definitely about, you know, the pilot center position, and that's, you know, minor stuff. Um, and the nice thing is, in future releases, you know, whenever they release a new version, they usually have a, a, a change log, and I'll look to see if the issue that I, you know, uh, put up was, you know, fixed or not, and then I'll test it if it was supposedly fixed. Um, so let's say, you know, in the next version in the change log, I see that they fixed the pile positioning for the Oculus Rift. Uh, I will test it, and if it's fixed, then, you know, I'll say yes, you know, I tested it, it was fixed. If it wasn't, you know, I'll, I'll give them the reports again and say, hey, it seems like the pile was a little further back again or a little forward again. And again, report back as much information as I can because I, I want this product to succeed. And I want it to succeed sooner rather than later. Um, if they get a lot of people just complaining, hey, my thing crashed with no information, they have to spend time to basically get that information from you. And that's time they can be spending fixing things. So the more you give them initially in that post, the better it is. So I want our community to be better, you know, beta people, basically, um, to kind of help out Eagle Dynamics and uh, make this a better, better beta. So um, that's pretty much it. You know, I hope you enjoyed the footage. Um, if you if you've had. Uh, experience with the Oculus Rift and DCS 1.5 yourself. Uh, you know, feel free to post anything, and um, I'll be doing more testing a little bit later uh, once my air cooler gets in and I've installed everything on my machine. I'll, I'll put it back in the cockpit, and uh, I'd, I'd love to do some more testing within the actual cockpit itself. But other than that, thanks for watching, and hope uh, hope you got something out of it.